Hello everyone, welcome to Scalers YouTube channel. This is Sai Prakash Reddy here and in this video we are going to be covering the topic on AWS uh, Lambda, right? So we are going to be talking about what exactly is AWS Lambda, we'll talk about some of its basics, we'll understand how AWS Lambda works behind the scenes, uh, we'll talk about some of its features, we'll, go, we'll see a in-depth uh, demo of uh, AWS Lambda and uh, we also try to write some uh, aws lambda functions and we'll see how uh, lambda works right so if this is something uh, that is you are interested in or you're looking to learn this video is for you and without taking any more time uh, let's get uh, right into the topic right so the first thing that i always do is uh, try to define a thing that we are trying to understand right so if i ask a question uh, like you know what exactly is aws lambda so the basic definition that the Google spits out is uh, it's an event driven serverless computing platform uh, that AWS provides, right? So here uh, there are two important things that you need to understand that is event driven and serverless computing, right? So we'll try to, to define these two important topics because uh, it is pretty important that you know what these uh, terms are uh, if you are uh, trying to learn the AWS Lambda, right? So first thing that uh, let's try to understand what serverless computing is when we will also dig into event driven uh, as we move along. So what exactly is serverless, right? So if you try to understand the word itself, it says serverless, right? So does it mean that uh, there, there are no servers? That's not the exact definition, but when somebody says that their application or the service that they are providing is a serverless application, they are servers. But uh, the headache of managing the servers and uh, deploying it, patching them, uh, managing them, all the you know, management side of things that uh, comes uh, by you know, provisioning a server, these all things are abstracted away from us, right? So we don't have to bother about managing the servers and we can basically uh, you know, use the application or run application without bo uh, bothering much about our servers or how things are being you know, spin up in behind. Right, that is what uh, serverless means, right? So, and also uh, when I say cloud native development, it is basically uh, an approach of uh, you know, building apps such that uh, these are you know, intended for cloud computing, right? So if I am writing an application that is uh, you know, targeted to run on cloud computing, so that would be basically a cloud native application, right? So a cloud native application basically runs on cloud, right? So that's what cloud is, right? So when I say serverless, right, so we are trying to you know, build a, a cloud native application such that uh, we are abstracting away the headache of managing the servers uh, from the user. Uh, that is what a serverless uh, service means, right. So now uh, trying to tie it all these uh, into a simpler definition, if I try to you know, understand AWS uh, Lambda again, right, so it's basically a compute service that lets you run your code without uh, managing your servers or provisioning your servers right so and uh, what does that mean uh, you can basically upload your code and it will be run on demand right so you don't need to worry about servers uh, you don't need to wait for the servers to be you not know, deployed or uh, you know, they are spin up and they are active all this stuff is abstracted from uh, you and also uh, lambda will run your code and it is highly available right so and you will only be built for the duration at which your code runs, right? So this is the uh, mode of AWS Lambda, right? So basically take whatever code that you have, give it to Lambda, it will run it for you on demand, right? So that is what AWS Lambda is and it, what it does, right? And when I say uh, supply your code, uh, there are a long list of uh, languages that it supports. Uh, it does not technically support every language that uh, that there is right so it has a vast uh, list of languages that it supports like uh, node.js uh, python uh, golang and i think javascript uh, there are multiple uh, there's a long list of languages it supports so it will take any of these code and it will run it for you right so that is what aws lambda is right so I also wanted to you know, show you uh, this uh, interesting uh, comparison. I uh, I think I have taken it from a website called Couchbase. Uh, shout out to Couchbase. So the the thing that I wanted to highlight here is the difference between uh, serverless and all the other uh, conventional uh, modes of computing, right? So when I say virtual machines, we are basically uh, 
you know having a hardware and uh, you are providing your uh, you know, machines right so the scale would be uh, you know number of machines that you have had it right so did i take two machines three machines that would be a unit of scale right so when you are uh, talking about computing model where you are using virtual machines you will be you know, talking in terms of number of machines that you are providing the same thing uh, if you look uh, in serverless uh, you don't need to you know uh, care about what what machine it runs all you need is functions right so what are the number of functions that you are running right so each piece of code that you run is basically a function right i mean that that's what function is right function is a piece of code that you run right so the abstraction uh, is done on hardware so whatever gpu cpu that you have it is being abstracted and you are being provided with a machine that can run anything right so and uh, when you are using virtual machines uh, it is being packaged uh, using your ami so when i say ami is basically uh, your iso files so ami stands for amazon machine uh, image that could be you your unix uh, your ubuntu linux windows whatever uh, ami that you are using whatever os that you are using right so that is what you use to package uh, in virtual machines whereas uh, in serverless you are only packaging your code right so you basically uh, no uh, deal with code right so that's the important difference that you need to understand uh, with serverless right so you t you uh, talk in terms of functions and you talk in terms of code and what is the language runtime that you are using right so is it python is it node js etc compared to another uh, if you are using virtual machines or containers right so for example example of uh, them would be uh, amazon ec2 right so you no talk about what ami that i'm using and what is its uh, os and uh, um, how much time that i will be running it all these kind of stuff right so you uh, you probably if you are using aws ec2 right you probably are going to run it for a uh, longer time right so hours to months even years right so if, if it's uh, running some sort of production application we tr generally try to keep it running 24/7 right so Uh, that's what uh, virtual machines are, and AWS Lambda is a uh, one of the uh, the head of all the uh, serverless uh, applications that services that AWS provides. Right. Also, uh, before we move along into another topics, I wanted to uh, make sure uh, we all are on same page uh, with different types of computing models. Right. So basically, in cloud computing, there are different kind of models. Uh, right. So namely. IAS, uh, CAS, PAS, FAS. We also have SAS, SAS. SAS is a big buzzword these days, right? So each of them are uh, basically types of computing model, and these are uh, each of them differ from one another uh, based on how much abstraction uh, does vendor does for us, right? So uh, how much does customer has to manage, and how much does a vendor abstracted from us? It's basically a kind of a mutual understanding between vendor and customer you no know, uh, they decide uh, what uh, does come under a vendor's responsibility what comes under customer's responsibility if i talk about ias so ias stands for infrastructure as a service right so basically we are providing infrastructure as a service for for our customer right so in ias uh, our customer uh, is provided with the operating system right so the customer has to manage the operating system uh, whatever underlying uh, hardware that there, there is uh, whatever virtualization or hypervisor uh, that we are doing it is all uh, abstracted by the vendor vendor does that behind the scenes uh, the customer is provided with uh, with a operating system ec2 is a good example for infrastructure as a service right so you also have container as a service where uh, uh, basically the customers are provided with containers uh, on which he can run his applications right so uh, this is what customer is ma managing and everything above right so uh, the these graphs are uh, given uh, in such a way that uh, things that you see in blue are abstracted by the vendor and everything above uh, is customer managed right so uh, coming to pass plas as in uh, platform as a service so you will be uh, you know provided with entire platform right so you will have your operating system containers runtime everything is there customer only has to manage his application right so that's what a pass is and the important topic that we need to understand here is fas right so fas stands for function as service 
and the reason for me uh, to bring this up is uh, AWS as Lambda is a uh, fast, right? So it basically provides you a function, function as a service, right? So the vendor abstracts away everything, right? So the runtime, container, everything. As a customer, we only need to manage our functions, right? So everything else is taken care by uh, the vendor itself. That is where again the serverless, uh, the idea of serverless comes in, right? So this is what fast is, and AWS Lambda is a pure example of function as a service so we will be provided a function and you can manage your functions as you need right so that would be a unit of scale right you will be running functions in your fast applications you will be running you know your operating systems on your ias right and so on right so this is a some understanding i wanted to uh, you know bring along and let's talk about aws lambda right so you remember we uh, previously uh, defined that it's an event driven serverless compute service right so what exactly is the event driven right so event driven uh, not only in this context but there are um, many architectures or as we call as event driven architectures right so where uh, everything is uh, you no know, tied around a event right so event is generated and event moves through different stages and entire architecture revolves around the event right that is what event driven is and as you have guessed aws lambda is also event driven service so uh, in aws uh, there are multiple number of services which can trigger events right so these events can be listened by aws lambda such that it can perform uh, its action and there is an interconnectivity between multiple uh, services right so aws lambda is highly uh, decoupled it can you know, be uh, used in conjunction with a plethora of uh, services that uh, aws provides you know, it can be easily linked with your s3 your api gateway um, your cloud watch logs your uh, dynamo db right almost any service that can fire an event aws lambda can listen to those events right so it's a event driven uh, service right so it listens to events perform action right so we have services which can generate events and we have a, our aws lambda which can listen to those events and it can perform or it can run some sort of code right so that is associated with that event right so this is where the idea of event driven uh, comes into the picture right so now that uh, we understood the basics of what aws lambda is i wanted to take this moment and uh, move into our demo right so let's let's go into demo i'll open my uh, browser and we'll log into our aws console and we'll see uh, step by step uh, what exactly is aws lambda you open my guest window i'll log into my aws console so this is a special link that i use uh, this is a link uh, that i use uh, to log in as iam user so if you are not sure what exactly is iam right so i have made an entire video on iam uh, prior to this i suggest you to watch the iam video uh, so that you know you have a better understanding and you are starting from the basics right i'll log in as an iam user And once you log into your console, right? So you will find uh, AWS IAM under your uh, uh, compute services. Uh, if I go into compute, I can see that I have AWS Lambda, right? So the the tag that AWS uh, gives to Lambda is run code without uh, worrying about your services, right? So the as a moment you enter into your Lambda, right? So you will be uh, given this uh, sort of uh, ui and you see right so we are talking about in terms of a function right the scale that you are using is function so you either create your function and uh, or delete your function whatever that you do everything is in, in terms of function right that is where fast uh, picture comes in right so it's a, a function as a service so i'll go ahead and create a new function and uh, the moment you try to create a new function uh, no aws uh, gives you through this um, uh, form where uh, it will ask you, you know if you are trying to create a function from scratch or you also already have some sort of presets that you already have or you want to run uh, some sort of container image all this stuff 
right so for your demonstration purposes uh, we'll go with a scratch we'll build a, a aws function from scratch and i'll call it as a scalar demo function and the runtime that i'll be using is uh, python 3.8 uh, python 3.8 uh, this looks good so be, this basically defines uh, what language that you are trying to use here right so i'll be using i'll be writing as a python code uh, you can write uh, node python ruby or any other language that you uh, your team uses right so also coming to uh, looking into the, this permissions right so by default aws will create a uh, role for us so again we have talked about uh, uh, this thing no aws i am in the previous video you can watch that video uh, if you are unsure of what aws i am is so it will basically create a new role for us with the basic permissions uh, but if there's already a role uh, that you already have created uh, in order to use your aws i am uh, uh, for your uh, lambda functions you can use that so i don't have any uh, aws roles already created so i'll go with a new role uh, with the basic permissions right for now so that if i need uh, to add some permissions i'll i'll let you know and i will add it on on uh, on the demo itself right so, so what are the basic permissions uh, that are given uh, uh, in order to run a aws lambda function right so uh, one thing uh, and the least the uh, function or permission that lambda requires is uh, uh, permission uh, to write logs to amazon cloudwatch right so again uh, we will we'll try to make a video on cloudwatch as well so cloudwatch is like a platform or a service where everything is being logged right so you are uh, all the services that are uh, you know doing some sort of uh, work right so they to generate some sort of logs and all so these are all collected in uh, amazon cloud watch right so this is a uh, some sort of a monitoring tool uh, that aws provides so we'll try to make a video on this as well right so if i go into advanced setting i can uh, do core signing uh, function url this is a, a new feature that was uh, introduced here again we can go into uh, advanced settings once we are uh, uh, good with our basics right so let's create a function this will create your func uh, con function with this name that we are given and this runtime that uh, uh, that we have chosen for right so right so let's also talk about what happens behind the scene when you run your uh, uh, lambda function right so aws uh, it takes your request that okay uh, this person sai prakash he wants to run this uh, particular lambda function so it takes that request and it will see uh, it will uh, look for uh, the servers that are already up and it will take your code it will uh, you know deploy your code onto that uh, compute and it will run it uh, and whatever result that it is given it will you know, spit back those results for you right so hey uh, in the background there is a lot of stuff happening like you know, load balancing all this stuff but amazon uh, basically abstracts us uh, away all these uh, managing things for us you basically you know write your code and it will be run for you on demand right so uh, right off the uh, uh, bat so you see that uh, you know we have a sample code for us so it's basically a hello world code and i'll want to talk about some uh, things right so you see that we have a function called as lambda handler right so we did not define it so it was created by default uh, for us and uh, basically when i uh, run this function or test this function so this is the function that is invoked right and it takes two uh, two arguments that is event and context right so these are uh, useful when uh, as we have to talk talked right so it's an event driven uh, uh, service so if you are tr trying to fire events from another service like s3 and all so this is where these two uh, parameters that we are collecting uh, no useful right so let's say if i am uh, i have written a event on uh, uh, s3 bucket such that on every item i added to the bucket i want to fire a some sort of a uh, lambda function right so let's say i am uploading a i am uploading a, a 1080p file uh, 1080p video uh, to my s3 bucket and i want a service or i want an application where uh, uh, it is uh, it has it takes my input file and it, i want to do some processing on it right so maybe let's say i want to use some ai model uh, to upscale it to 4k so i have a, some backend api which does that 
so that I want to automate things like uh, on each upload that I make to my S3, I want my uh, videos to be taken and ran ran on my backend and upscaled them and put my results back into S3, right? So that is where I can I can set an event on my S3 bucket that is triggered on each addition to that. So we will accept those event here and using that context, we'll do some sort of our logic there and we write it, write the results back to the S3 service, right? So this is where uh, event and context uh, comes into picture, right? So for now, uh, let's try to run these uh, code without doing any changes, right? So we're basically returning a status code of 200 and uh, the body that our API returns is hello from Lambda, right? So in order to run it, uh, I can do a test and it will ask for your event, right? So right now we are we are doing nothing with the event, right? So I'll say uh, I'll I'll create an empty event, and I'll uh, save this and I'll test this uh, with my empty event, right? So the result is this, right? So it it gives me a response of two hundred and hello from lambda, right? So if I change it to something like uh, hello from lambda and uh, i'll call it as uh, i'll give my name say so this is my name and i'll define my name as let's say i'll call it scalar audience and if i test it uh I'll deploy the changes i'll test it probably i should have been the other way uh, i should test and then deploy so you see that the response is changed, right? So hello from Lambda to scalar audience, right? So basically uh, you can write uh, your Python logic here and it will be ran in the same way that you ran your any other Python code, right? So this is how uh, AWS Lambda works, uh, but let's also try to understand uh, all these uh, things, right? So if I go back to the functions, right? So I can see all the functions that I have created here and if I want to perform any action on this, right? So there are a couple of actions that I can perform. One is I can test that, uh, test uh, basically runs the function uh, for us and I can delete the function and I can also view its details, right? So when I go into uh, details, this is what we are given, right? So there is this uh, a code editor that uh, Lambda provides for us. This is where you can write your code, but uh, if you think that you know you are working with a bigger project, let's say you have some 30 or 40 files that you are running and uh, this is not a uh, easier way to you know deal with this, right? So you can basically upload your zip file, right? So you can you know, uh, build your code on locally, uh, test it on local and basically package it into a zip file and upload it uh, into your, uh, upload your zip file here, right? So I can upload my zip file here and this will basically overwrite all the previous code that is there here and it will run that uh, code, right? And apart from that, I can also take code from a S3 location, right? So I can basically uh, save all my uh, project into an S3 location and I can basically read it from the S3 directly, right? So that uh, whenever if I want to make it changes, right? I can make it directly make changes into my S3 and it will automatically, uh, you know, can be uploaded from there, right? And if you are going to some settings, right? nothing uh, that is uh, important okay let's go into uh, configuration uh, there are things that uh, we need to understand right so by default a function that you create it comes with a memory of 128 megabytes so this is basically the ram uh, that is it is being allocated and the storage would be 512 megabytes right so this is the uh, default allocation again uh, it, it 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 automatically scales uh, with your usage right so if you want uh, if you're running let's say a bigger uh, project which requires let's say uh, two gigabytes of ram so you can basically configure it here let's say if i want to uh, configure it uh, i think it, it supports still uh, 10 gigabytes of ram which is more than enough for a function right so if you think about it we are basically running a function so let's say if i want to you know, let's say 2048 right so that would be two gigabytes of RAM, right? Two gigabytes of uh, memory. I can provide that. And uh, this is how uh, you can you know, configure your Lambda, right? So the amount of storage and uh, thing is to remember is that, you no, know, if you change these values, automatically the price also changes, right? 
and the storage as well uh, you can have up to 10 uh, gigabyte of uh, storage uh, you can view the pricing here and this is also a timeout right so what is a timeout is uh, timeout is the amount of time uh, lambda waits for the function to execute right so it will, let's say for some reason your lambda function uh, got stuck in some uh, doing some uh, work right so it will automatically get timeout uh, in three seconds so this is a default uh, timeout so you can automatically change it so if you know that you, know, you are running some sort of a transcription jobs or some sort of a scraping job and you know that it, it will run for let's say uh, two to three minutes you can basically uh, put a higher timeout but again uh, the higher the timeout that you are allowing right so that's the longer uh, time that uh, AWS Lambda allows the function to run and you will be billed for uh, the same right talking about the billing the best feature of Lambda and uh, is you will be only billed for the amount of duration that your code runs right so apart from the traditional uh, uh, EC2 etc right so you will be built uh, basically for all the infrastructure right so irrespective of your running something or not so you will be built uh, for all the time you have uh, your so uh, uh, no resources uh, spinned up right so but coming to your lambda function let's say you want to run your uh, code every day for 20 seconds right so you have a script uh, that your company uses to back up some files to cloud and this should run uh, for 20 seconds every day right so uh, this is where aws lambda uh, really shines right so instead of uh, provisioning your uh, servers or provisioning hardware and keeping it ready right so uh, you basically create a function and run it for that 20 seconds and you will be billed for that 20 seconds right and the billing happens uh, in steps of i think 100 milliseconds let's say if your code runs for let's say 2 milliseconds you will build for uh, 100 milliseconds right so that, that that is the base and if your code is running for let's say 540 milliseconds right so you will be built for 600 milliseconds right so 100 milliseconds is the base and you will be built uh, on steps of 100 milliseconds right so that's the uh, core feature and core uh, killer feature for lambda and that is where why people uh, like to use lambda right so it is cheap uh, for certain use cases right and if you observe right so there is this functional overview that we have and there is a trigger right so trigger is basically all the services that can uh, you know create an event or that can trigger an event such that our lambda function can be invoked right so as i've already mentioned right there are uh, multiple uh, number of uh, third party and first party uh, uh, services that aws has that can trigger your lambda function right so Things like DynamoDB, uh, your CloudWatch Event Bridge, or uh, let's say some sort of uh, streaming services that you have, uh, like uh, Kinesis, or your API Gateway, right? So you can build some REST API, and users can hit that API such that uh, a Lambda function runs as a backend and spits out the results for them, right? So you can listen to all these uh, events that they provide, and S3, S3 is one of the useful use cases where uh, if user wants to perform some sort of action on uh, uploading files etc this is where uh, you can use this uh, we'll probably do a demo on that and all basically you have sns your notification service and your queue services all these can trigger your lambda functions right so apart from that uh, there are some partners which can also provide event atlassian right so you can have uh, your devops team or you can have some jira tickets uh, that can directly trigger these you can have identity providers and there are multiple uh, services that can trigger your uh, AWS Lambda. So this is where uh, you can trigger them. Right? You can also have add destinations, uh, things like, let's go back. So if I want to add destination, right? So I can uh, spit out the results of uh, Lambda function to an SNS topic or uh, I can write it to some sort of a queue or I can have a chain of lambda functions right so I can have a lambda function a which does the transcription job and I can have a lambda function b which takes the result of the transcription job and uploads it to some sort of a service right so you can bridge you can uh, connect your lambda functions or you can also write to some sort of event bridge right so these are some of the targets uh, that you can uh, set these are some of the destinations right 
so basically these two uh, things right so these two adding trigger and adding a destination these are some killer features uh, that lets uh, lambda to be a highly decoupled service right so aws lambda as we have seen in the list right it can talk to almost all the services uh, in aws that can uh, you know, take advantage of events right so if there's a uh, service that has some sort of event or some sort of a queue and you are sure that you no know, aws lambda can uh, work with that right so coming to the monitoring so we have talked about a uh, cloud cloud watch right so cloud watch is uh, some sort of a metrics uh, aggregator so you can this is used to monitor your uh, usage and uh, everything that that's happening uh, with your service right so if i look into some of the metrics that i have i can see that over the time uh, whatever requests that are happening and how much duration uh, uh, we are running the server and invocations uh, these are near real time i won't say it is real time they are these are near real time so if i reload uh, for some time we might see some invocation right so yeah so you can see that in this region there is one invocation happened right so and it ran for like uh, one millisecond right so there are no error rates uh, error rate is zero and i think delivery types uh, throttling concurrent executions if you are running multiple uh, concurrently so all these stuff these are basically a metrics dashboard and we already talked about uh, configurations you can pass environment variables right so if you are having some sort of api key uh, they can be you know, created as environment variables just like you do with uh, any other uh, github or any other uh, project uh, you can have your vpc configuration all this kind of stuff right so you can you know, go into each of them uh, and you know, uh, explore it on your own right so you can have aliases uh, basically you no know, function uh, we can have a alias to a function so that instead of calling the function directly you can call it the alias as well right so again uh, we can have uh, multiple versions of it right so you can give some updates to that function right so these are uh, everything that you need to know about uh, aws uh, lambda right so let's also do a small right let's write a small function uh, such that uh, no it returns us uh, it calls through some, uh, some api and it returns us some results right so just to see uh, what is possible with aws lambda so i was thinking uh, there is this api called uh, that returns us jokes right so if i go into here uh, i should see some end point uh, I'll, let's say let let's look into some programming uh, custom i'll go to custom and let's say uh, i want to look into some uh, programming jokes right so uh, this would be my API endpoint, and if I hit this endpoint, I'll get a joke each time, right? So a programmer put two glasses uh, on his bedside. We will sleep a full one. In case he gets a an empty one. In case he doesn't, that's a programming joke. Uh, <laughs> so this API, uh, each time that you hit, uh, you'll get a programming joke, right? So this is setup. Why was JavaScript developer sad because he did not, he didn't know how to express himself. Okay, that's funny. Uh, let's do that. Let's create a function uh, that can hit this API and uh, provide us the results, right? Again, it's not a. It doesn't make a complete sense, right? So we can directly call an API. Uh, why do we need a function, right? But just uh, thinking into a bigger perspective, right? So we might be having multiple services, and our uh, team wants us uh, to interact with the services. So just to show the power of AWS uh, Lambda, let's create a new function, right? So I'll call it as a, a joke uh, generator. Let's say joke generator function, and I am comfortable with Python, so I'll use Python, and uh, everything is by default, right? So in an ideal scenario, uh, you might be having a, some sort of a database uh, with your company from where you'll be retrieving the results, right? In order to simulate that. I'll be hitting uh, this API to get those results. Okay, right, so I think I need to use uh, import requests to hit this API, and uh, let's say I'll call it as response is equal to request dot. Uh, let let me Google it. Uh, uh, make API request Python. Mm, let, let us copy this request this and uh, 
put it here so let me give my API here so my API would be hmm. so this would be our API which returns us uh, right so again as I said this, ideally you would have some sort of a da uh, database service that you might be you know, storing so think a bit of as a some sort of a service that you are running right so this could be returning uh, the results di directly from uh, dynamo db or postgres etc so we are basically simulating that with our api and let's say i'm doing some stuff here so i'll call uh, that api and uh, whatever result that i may have uh, i'll do it here so i'll send the response in the body right so i'll basically test it once uh, again i know i don't need any uh, event uh, for me so I can do an empty event. I think I need to use underscore here. Right. So let me test it. And it says hello from Lambda. Why is that? Acha, I need to deploy it. And now if I test. Uh, object of type is not serializable. Okay. I think I need to do response dot body. Um, if I deploy it again and test response has no attribute body okay. let's go back uh, I think there, there should be something called as dot text or something let's do this let's go to gigs for gigs and uh, we'll do a get and r dot json okay. I do JSON again. Don't mind me. Uh, I just Google it, cool stuff until they work. Hmm. Okay, now we got uh, our response. So ideally, let's do one thing, right? So this is our response. Uh, let's only uh, send setup and uh, delivery here, right? So I'll from the response. I'll let's say I'll take setup. Setup would be response response dot response uh, yeah this is a response right and in response I have this setup so I'll say response of setup punchline I'll say response of what what is our punchline delivery and I would say setup this setup plus punchline so this would be easier to understand uh, we can directly see the joke okay deployment is still in progress key error setup I think there is setup right uh, um, I'll, I'll just forward this part and I'll just debug this and uh, we'll uh, see the response here. So, have this. Okay, so I understood uh, the error, what the error was, right? So some of the jokes that we have, right? So it doesn't, they don't have setup. Some of them directly have a joke. So instead of, uh, we can do a, uh, basically check whether if there is a set, you know, but let's do this thing, right? So let's basically return a response. And let's say that the downstream uh, team, whatever, whoever is using that, you know, they'll take care of this, right? So uh, basically if I deploy this, and if I do hit the test, right? So every time I run it, so I'll get a, a body with a joke on it, right? So uh, a byte walks into a bar looking miserable. The bartender will say, what's wrong, buddy? Parody error, right? So that's a joke. Uh, might not be funny, but it's a joke. So this is how uh, we can implement 
uh, AWS Lambda, right? So this is, uh, I think, everything that you need to know to get it started, right? So I see this as a, a good starting place so that you can explore more. And again, functional is something which is uh, uh, recently uh, got launched. So basically what this does is, uh, you can directly invoke the function with the URL, right? So previously what we uh, used to be done was, uh, you need to add a trigger, let's say, add a trigger with API gateway, and you can create an, uh, let's say, REST API, and let's say if I want to keep it open, open to everyone, so if I add this, so what happens is there's a trigger uh, that is generated, right? So, and <clears throat> so the trigger would be uh, this uh, URL, right? So if I hit this URL, so it will automatically uh, give me result uh, that the API is uh, giving, right? So in order to hit that URL, so I'll be hitting with this uh, API, right? So this one, right? So, so this thing uh, I can, uh, let's say I can give it uh, to my team uh, who uses this. So let's say I'm hitting this uh, API a bunch of times, right? So I'll reload it. Uh, okay, so I have, have, I have hit this API a bunch of times. Uh, so this basically is what it, it basically, uh, what it does is, uh, so we are going to API gateway. Again, API gateway, I think I'll make a video on it uh, uh, next right so we're using an api endpoint uh, from the api gateway and that is uh, basically sending an event uh, into our uh, joker generator function and whatever result that we are uh, generating this is again uh, given it back to the user right so this is our uh, so joke that we are generating right so again this could be anything so you could write you could run any uh, any different kind of a code here right so this could be Maybe you no. Know, who knows? Uh, entire backend of your startup uh, can be run on a um, lambda function. Again, that's not uh, something uh, unusual. Uh, people do that. Uh, they run their entire backend services on uh, AWS Lambda, which is quite sufficient if you're if you think about a, a smaller startup, right? So ideally, you want uh, you have your own infrastructure that you uh, maintain, but lam lambda functions also have uh, ability to do that, right? So again, if I go into my monitoring and uh, see whether all the requests that I have uh, uh, done through this API are they really coming here or not right so generally it takes uh, some time uh, to load uh, especially this mon monitoring logs um, let me hit that okay folks I think uh, there is an error here Okay, uh, anyway, uh, if I uh, so see, go into my monitoring, right, so I can see all the requests that are uh, made, right, so I can see uh, what, what's the number of time, uh, time of code uh, each run and I, I will have a clear log of each request that I received, right, so this is all uh, you need to know about uh, AWS Lambda and I hope this video was uh, useful, right, so uh, please let us know if there are any other videos that you want us to make and i think that's it for this video uh, i hope you liked it and if you do uh, please give a like uh, and uh, write down any uh, suggestions for us for the newer videos and thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video bye bye